Hi everyone, this lesson is focusing on Newton's three laws of motion. What have we talked about so far? Well, we've talked about displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Acceleration, of course, is a change in velocity with respect to time. Well, what is causing this change? Well, what's causing a change in velocity, which what is causing an acceleration, is a force. And a force is simply a push or a pull. Anytime we introduce a new uh, physical quantity, we should uh, denote what units we are using to describe it in calculations. So the standard unit for force is the Newton, named after Isaac Newton, who's also the namesake for these three laws of motion. And you can abbreviate Newtons by just the capital letter N. A force is a vector quantity. It's a push or a pull, and of course you can push or pull something in a certain direction. So of course a force is a vector quantity. Also, you can have multiple forces acting on the same object, and when that's the case, what you're concerned about is the net force. In other words, the total force acting on the object. All right, now that we have an understanding of what fo uh, force is, let's look at Newton's first law of motion. The first law states that an object will maintain a constant velocity if the net force acting is zero. What does this mean? Well, you can have multiple forces acting on an object, but if they add up to zero, they have no effect on the motion. So you're going to maintain a constant velocity. If you want to write it more mathematical, you can say the velocity vector is a constant if the sum, that's what this is, a summation sign, if the sum of the forces add up to zero. All right, a few more vocab words to get into. You have probably heard of the term inertia before. So this is just the property of an object to resist changes in motion, and it's proportional to mass, meaning the bigger the object, the more resistant it is to changes in motion. Shouldn't come as no surprise, we've all had experiences with inertia. It's easier to push a skateboard than it is to push a truck. And one more uh, vocab word is equilibrium, and we're going to use that word a lot in this class, so it's important that we know what it means. Um, an object is in equilibrium if it is at rest or it is moving at a constant velocity. So basically you are in equilibrium if the net forces acting on you are zero. So it's important to make that distinction. You can have forces acting on you, but they have to add up to zero for you to be in equilibrium. Let's look at a few examples of that. So let's say you have a satellite moving in deep space. So there's no more um, engines uh, running on this ship. It's just moving on a straight line path. And since it's in deep space, there's no gravitational forces. So that object is going to maintain a constant velocity. There are no forces on it, and so it is in equilibrium. Another example would be a block on a table. So here's a block. This is a tabletop. There are two forces acting on the block. There's the force of gravity downwards, and there's the force of the table upwards. But when you add those two forces up, they add up to zero. So this is also an equilibrium. Okay, moving on to Newton's second law. 
The second law is going to quantify what the relationship is between force and acceleration. So it says that an object is going to accelerate in the direction the net force is acting, and they are related to one another through this relationship. So this side of the equation is the net force, and this side is mass times the acceleration. And so this is where that concept of inertia comes in. If you have a larger mass, you have more inertia, and if you have the same force acting on it, the more mass you have, there has to be a trade-off, the less acceleration you are going to have. All right, a few notes on this relationship, F equals MA. Uh, the first one is to remember that the units that appear in an equation on, on each side have to be the same. While I have units of newtons on the left side, I have units of kilograms times meters per second squared on the right-hand side. Thus, those have to be equivalent. So it's important to note that one newton is equal to one kilogram times meters per second squared. So newtons are not a fundamental unit. It's actually a composite of kilograms times meters per second squared. Further thing to note, forces are vectors, and so you can analyze them by breaking them down into components. So that boxed equation from up here is really three equations. There's an equation for the x components, an equation for the y, and an equation for the z components. All right, now I want to look at some common forces that we're going to see over and over again in this class. So I've got a table that I'm going to show you. Uh, it'll have forces, common forces, uh, their abbreviation that you will uh, see in equations, and in, then just some general comments uh, about them. So the first force I'd like to talk about is the force of gravity and that is synonymous with weight. So if you're saying weight, you mean the force of gravity. If you're saying force of gravity, you mean the weight. Here are two of the main ways to abbreviate those in equations. You'll sometimes see F subscript G. You'll sometimes see a W. The comment I want to make for this one is to make sure we understand the difference between mass and weight. So mass is just a measure of how much stuff is in an object, and that's a scalar quantity. Weight is a vector quantity. In fact, weight is your mass times the acceleration of gravity, and the direction is down. Our next common force we'll see in this class is the normal force also called the support force. This is just a force that a surface will exert to prevent you from falling through. So the ground that you are standing on or sitting on right now is providing a normal force. The two main abbreviations are the following, F subscript N. Also, you'll sometimes just see the letter N. And then, this is my main comment for this one. If you are on a horizontal surface and you are not experiencing a, an acceleration, in other words, you're in equilibrium, the normal force is going to counteract and cancel the force of gravity. So they're going to have equal magnitudes, just opposite directions. That's what the negative sign is indicating. Our third force we'll see in this class a lot is tension. Sometimes you'll see it abbreviated F subscript T. Other times you'll see it with just the letter T. And in this class where you'll see tension oftentimes is a string pulling on an object. And finally, there is the friction force sometimes abbreviated F subscript FR, 
and sometimes abbreviated lowercase f. Friction always opposes motion. And it turns out that it's actually proportional to the normal force. Because what is the normal force? It's, you know, it's the force, that support force, uh, holding an object up. Well, friction is a contact force. And you can probably imagine that the stronger the normal force, the more the two surfaces are pressing against each other. So the stronger the contact force is, and thus the friction is going to be stronger as well. So that should really come as no surprise that it's going to turn out that friction is proportional uh, to the normal force. Okay, I've gone through the first two laws of motion. There are three of them. And here is the third one. And the third law states that forces always come in action-reaction pairs. Meaning that if you press on the wall, the wall is pressing back. And it's pressing back with the same magnitude of force that you are acting on it, just in an opposite direction. Pictorially, what does that look like? Well, imagine that you've got two objects, A and B, pushing on each other. Well, the force of A acting on B is equal to the negative of the force of B acting on A. So forces always come in pairs. I just have one note on this uh, third law, and that is that these action-reaction pairs cannot act on the same body. Notice that this force here, this is A on B, well, the other one is B on A. They're not acting on the same body, so be aware of that. All right, so that is a lot of information to get thrown at you. Our next video, we are going to try to apply these laws. We're going to try to do some analysis with forces.